What's up, y'all? My name is Ian Edwards, and welcome to the Soccer Comic Rant. Uh, we're going to talk about Liverpool versus Arsenal. Uh, big match of the weekend. We're going to discuss that. We're going to talk about Chelsea versus... Who'd you play? Newcastle? Why am I blanking right now? Let's see, yeah. Yeah, Newcastle. Great game. Cole Palmer. Mm -hmm. Doing Cole Palmer things. Uh, we're going to talk about... We have a podcast, Derby. I don't know if I mentioned that last weekend. Uh, I didn't notice that Southampton was playing uh, Man City, so that's a podcast, Darby. But we're going to talk about that. Lee is here. He's still alive. He did not hurt himself, not visually that we could see. The, this, you know, people people who cut themselves don't show the marks. Uh, <laughs> we got good, I'm good. <laughs> and we got Chris, a stand up comic. Uh, I was on the road in Batavia, Illinois, doing stand-up, and we talked about soccer, and he's an Everton fan, and I was like, I got to bring people on the podcast who are in a lower position in the table than me. For me to <laughs> yeah, so, right. as Chris texted me today, I was like, hey, come on, come on, pull up, <laughs> <Yeah>. fam. <laughs> so, yeah. glad to have you. We're going to talk about, so we, so we have some Everton coverage, you know, because I kind of like Everton more, Sean Dice, and what he's doing yeah. over there, so yeah. we could talk about that. And you talk about United and uh, whatever else we got. We got some calls, the penalty, the Man United game, uh, the the ball being called out in the in the Villa game versus Bournemouth. But Vern Bournemouth again causing more trouble and upsetting carts everywhere. So, how y'all doing? Uh, we got Neil Shakovati, Chelsea fan, stand up comic. We got Lee Hudson, stand up comic, uh, Southampton. Fan. <laughs> Why are you making that face, man? <laughs> oh man and and we got chris tranny uh everton fan and Tr chris i was afraid to say your last name am i saying it right no absolutely not in fact i i want this recorded so i can cancel it. <laughs> could, you, could you say your last i was gonna ask you too often no 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 strike one triani uh, triani <laughs> triani <laughs> Neil, Lee, you guys want to take a shot? I mean, how many comedy careers can we end on this thing? I, I, I will go with with, uh, with trainee. Trainee? Ballpark, ballpark. Neil. Because, that's, because that one is not going to get me cancelled, you're saying. I don't believe in last names. If you see, if you heard mine, it, it, it's a while. It takes a while to get there. I'm starting to, so, I'm starting to you develop just... your philosophy. I'm going <laughs> trainee or trani. Yeah. Trani? Yeah, it's it's Trani. That, it's Trani. Yeah, phonetically. Yeah, this is it's very <laughs> suspiciously spelled to can't Chris, people cancel. Chris, Chris, what, uh, Chris, was it about 2017 that it started to become an issue in your life? Yeah, <laughs> you probably yeah. coasted through that. This is never an issue. And suddenly one fine day, bam. Nailed it. I was in a, a movie and uh, I was watching a movie in the trailer. Someone was like, what are you? And I was like, what? Wait, what? <laughs> oh, damn. What just happened? My last name? So. Yeah, because yeah, only when people see the spelling of it. Yeah. Does it sound like the way I just pronounced it? Yeah. The way, yeah. The way the former comic Ian Edwards. just The former comic. <laughs> I mean, I was like, because Whitney Cummings last name is actually Cummings, which is bananas. You know, yeah. that's that's that's. You know, if, if you are a parent, in order to prove that you're, and you have that last name, in order to prove that you're fit to raise a child, you should know, let's change our last name. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or blame the yeah. kid on the guy you were seeing on the side just to change the name. But come on. Yeah, you know, like, the, and like every generation, there should be a refresh. Like, because <laughs> the, all these words keep changing every generation. Yeah. So... I, I should get to open for Whitney, so that way on the marquee it's hilarious. Like... <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's fucking hilarious! All right, so we'll start. Where should we start? Let's talk about you know Liverpool versus Arsenal since it's the marquee game, and uh, my thoughts on it. Like, who wants to go first on their thoughts on the game? I know last week I was like, uh, I didn't believe Liverpool would lose. I felt like it would be a tie or Liverpool win. And it's because uh, Arteta had like key players missing. And uh, then he produced two of these key players magically before the game started. And in all, all the 
pregame interviews, when people would ask if they were going to start, he would not tell. And I should have known. Yeah. And and then you see them coming off the bus, but like, they're not going to start. They got to be injured. They're not going to be fit. But Saka comes on the pitch immediately and just destroys Roberts. Like, I mean, in a, a guy that's won so much to get destroyed in such a professional way is pretty embarrassing to the point where I'm like, what if that was Trent? You know how everybody likes to go in on Trent and say he's a terrible yeah. defender? Like, they're not going to do that with Andy Roberts. But if that had happened to Trent, it, even if Liverpool had won the game, it, nobody would have heard the end of it. But, it, you know, you you can get beat, you know. And I, I'm not even going to kill Trent. I mean, Roberts. It's just how skillful Saka is. Like, And that's what Onslaught did. He, like, gave Saka the credit of the, having a an incredible play. Like, so many times now... Like when somebody scores, they the commentator is like, "Look at the defenders! Look where they're at!" Blah, blah, blah. Like sometimes it the ball is perfect. Like there's no perfect balls anymore. Mm. So I feel like Liverpool kind of got dominated in the first half, and uh, but they got to go back off a set piece. And it always makes me feel good to see Arsenal concede yeah. on a set piece mm. because that's what they're good at. And I don't like how Arsenal's Arsenal did score another goal on a set piece. I don't like how the camera is on the set piece coach and he's out there. And if they they score, he walks away like he was actually the one on the pitch that scored. Like, that's just too much you, for, for a set piece coach. Like, you don't see the special teams coach in American football, like, like standing on a soapbox like that. Yeah, no, I don't like this trend of set piece coaches standing up Mm -hmm. for the set pieces because i i've like, i've been to quite a few games this season and last season in various different premier league stadiums and they have screens mm -hmm. in the dugouts now there's multiple screens like right. you you can look at your setup better on one of those screens mm -hmm. than you can standing at pitch level looking across because you don't like you get a better view of it so I think it's it's all for the optics. These guys they want to they want profile. They want to be known, mm -hmm. and like you say, you know, celebrating like they scored the goal if it does happen as well. Um, it feels know, like I, what I want to see. I want to see if a team concedes from a corner or a free kick. <laughs> I want to see the set piece coach stand up <laughs> in the technical area and just turn around to all the fans like that one's on me. I fucked up. Yeah, I, um, I want to see the manager having to go at the set piece coach. The set piece coach has to go as the ball goes in. And like, as I showed this replay on the giant screen, the manager absolutely loses it at, at the set piece coach. Yeah, oh, I think it was Mourinho or someone. I can imagine oh, yeah, like, yeah, turning yeah. around and like, giving him a yeah. slap. Yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's so, almost yeah. like set piece coaches, you're not allowed to celebrate anymore unless you take credit for the bad ones. Hilarious. That's pretty funny. It's, it's almost like uh, they're not paying him. And he's like, <laughs> as an open micer, they're like, but if you, you can get do this for what what is what's the word? exposure so we'll give you some exposure mm -hmm. so it's like oh, like yeah. he's gonna set piece go get your open mic exposure and maybe well, they're on commission yeah there's a goal <laughs> you think that's their parking validation yeah that's, their that's parking it. Validation. <laughs> you get to see the game and <laughs> back in the day they wouldn't even let the set piece coach come to the game you know unless he had another <laughs> yeah. job yeah yeah your job's done your job's not in real time yeah, and we, you'll yeah. you'll have we'll call you Monday for practice if any of the shit works. Like you're not gonna just stand up on the pitch. He's at the pub uh, afterwards with his drink tickets. <laughs> say that again. I said he's at the pub afterwards with his drink tickets. <laughs> yeah, oh, hilarious. That's funny. Yeah, yeah like you might that most set piece coaches would be in the bar afterwards trying to convince everybody in the bar that he yeah, was, that was a me. part of this. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I, I wrote that set piece. Yeah, I drew that up. See, I got the drawings of the set piece right here. You know, you wouldn't even be allowed at the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he stole that set piece from me. <laughs> it's hilarious. That's my, that's my work. Yeah, he's like, I tagged the set piece with the with the uh, choreographed celebration. You know, oh, hilarious. Yeah, but yeah, Liverpool. I mean, Arsenal's. Set piece, good delivery from uh, Glenn Rice, and uh, it, 
But I, I do Declan. give Liverpool credit <laughs> for like uh, Declan Rice. My bad. I always feel like calling him Glenn Rice because there's a basketball player called Glenn <laughs> yeah. Rice. Yeah. So, but you know, I give it to, to Liverpool, man. I, they didn't give up. It's a tough situation. You got the Emirates. Uh, Arsenal got some of their players back and and they uh, dug in and it's the coach's first time at the, the Emirates. You could, you know, like Gary Neville was saying, you could like watch football as much as you want. You got a brand new job at a brand new team. These are two high class, big British teams and you're there for the first time. And also Arsenal has come second in the league twice in a row. So yeah. it's a good way to to go up there and let your players put up a fight. And I just, his team is doing some of the, a lot of the things that Man United is not, uh, isn't doing. Mm -hmm. So I kind of, it's tough not to compare. It's just, they just don't give up. They believe in themselves. They run a lot. They fight and they have good structure and they have good attackers. And it's just, I didn't think they would lose this game and they didn't. Uh, anybody else want to say anything? I'm curious to hear anyone else's thoughts on the the one when Van Dyke or not Van Dyke, Canate chopped down uh, Martinelli in the box. Looked like a penalty to me. Nah, nah, he 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 got the ball. I, like I, I'm not supposed to be rooting for Liverpool. I wouldn't lie. <laughs> it, it it wasn't a pen. There's something about this Liverpool team which I'm like really not able to figure out. Like, they're getting these results. They're not necessarily playing the best football, which I guess, like, you know, with the new manager, you kind of expect. But, like, even, like, last game, and there have been a couple of games this season, they somehow get the result. Like, for today, for the most part, it looked like Arsenal should be, you know, should come away with the win. But, yeah, they they have these, you know, trends. Salah, they step up, man, like, in these big moments. And... So I, I feel like we still don't know like what level of manager slot is. I think I think it'll take a while for some of these uh, uh, like can they sustain this for a season? Where I kind of feel like individuals are dragging the manager along right now. You do? Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I, I feel like the team is 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 performing or like at least outputting at a higher level than what they're playing at. I just feel like in every season, that's how you prove that you're a good. Imagine if they start playing good. Like there's some teams we know, like we know when Man City is not playing good because we've seen them play good. So yeah, exactly. We, we have, so, we have so a we track record that. of that. So we we, we don't yeah, know. But yeah. if don't they're know. winning in a losing way, wait till they start winning in a winning way. I, yeah. I, I you know, I'll take those amount of points. As an Everton yeah. fan, how you feel about? Uh, Liverpool living their best life at the clock. Body, it's it is like having like it's like being the unpopular like like hmm. it's like having like a better looking brother. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like you've got. The Isn't same. that true? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean? Like, <laughs> I actually do have uh, four brothers, and they would love to hear you say that. So. <laughs> Uh, but no, it's it's awful. It's like it's like yeah, we're the the redheaded stepchild of Liverpool, which is ironic. We're the blue headed stepchild of right. Liverpool. <laughs> I mean, they th their start is like completely uh, impressive, as if they didn't win enough under Klopp. Um, I guess like uh, Arnie Slot is doing things differently with uh, the players than Jurgen did. I was listening to this uh, podcast, and it's like. One of the things he's letting them do, like when there was a home game in Liverpool, like Klopp used to have the team like stay at a hotel. You know how like he didn't want the athletes going out drinking or partying, mm -hmm. whatever. So he'd make them stay in a hotel with curfew. And like Slot is just letting like the Liverpool players stay in their own bed. Like, you know, he's trusting that they're going to like stay in and like not go party. Or I think just even like sleeping in your own bed before a match is like better than going to a hotel. So. I I don't know. There's been all these like little things he's done uh, that they seem to be paying off. And meanwhile, we're just Everton's just fine to not be in relegation zone. You know, <laughs> like so. It's yeah. I believe in you guys though. I, I, we'll, we'll 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 get to you. I think you're being just like a fan. 
or you yeah. just you know or a comic too yeah and shitting on your team and hoping secretly that it keeps going the way it's going right now yeah see what you're doing we're not i mean not stupid. i'm a glass half half full guy i actually do think everton are going to see brighter days but as i say that i worry you guys are quiet and and disagree entirely so i mean i mean what do you guys think I mean, Lee, you got them next week. Yeah. Um, I mean, we we were at home. We we need we need to beat them. <laughs> it's uh, it's like nothing nothing less than a win in that game is um, is going to do us any good, really. Um, you know, I mean, point to point. But I mean, it, it's the, the the pressure really grows if the, the I mean, the longer we go without a win. So no matter who we're playing, we you know we need we need stuff right now. And Everton are a weird team, though. Sometimes I think they've. They turn the corner, and then other times, like I was watching Fulham just carve them open mm -hmm. um, yeah. at some points in that game, and you know, I was like, I hope this is the Everton who shows up to St Mary's next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which I was going to ask you, uh, Ian. You were like, because like I watched that game too, Lee, and mm -hmm. Everton were just like atrocious. Uh, like, why? Why? And, I mean, I was like almost embarrassed uh, and hmm. thinking like we didn't look like a Premier League team, but like, like you were gonna say, Ian, why should I not take that stance? Why should I just like? I, I, I just feel like so. A few games ago, yeah. twice in a row, you had two nothing leads and you lost them. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and then you got a. I think you got another two not, nothing lead or a lead and then tied. And then you mm -hmm. then you won. Yeah. So it's like gradual success. And then you went yeah. down one against a better team. Yes. And then you tied it. You yeah. didn't give up. Yeah. So it's like you want to progress in a lot of different ways right. in it, throughout the season. You want to progress like in the way you play, and right. you want to progress in like how yeah. to not lose from a winning point and then how yeah. to to then you achieve that by a draw and then how to win and then how to win or get points from a losing position it, right you know and then and that, that's all mentality building so i see right. your mentality trajectory your your mentality xg is 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 going up so yeah, yeah. Uh, you know i it's tough for you to see that from the inside and you can yeah. feel the, the water the relegation water on your ankles mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah. so yeah i feel you but I, you know you play hard every week i mean I, honestly i couldn't i agree more maybe i'm not like a typical evertonian in that like if we can just hold on until <laughs> this freaking group buys us not freaking but the freaking group like these americans Hilarious. billionaires they they own roma and they're buying Everton right now. If we can just like hold on. Now they are talking about there's rumors that they're gonna fire Dyche, which is a whole other thing. But like Ian, I couldn't agree with you more. Like all of our points have come from like we haven't gotten an L in like five games. Mm -hmm. We've got like like two wins and three draws. So like all of our points have come in the past five mm -hmm. games. Like if Everton can just like not Everton. <laughs> if we can, that's the saying. Everton's gonna Everton. It's like if we could not Everton for a change. Like Everton is gonna Everton. Hilarious. Like our goal yesterday was by our substitute striker Beto in the ninety fourth minute of the game to tie it. I mean, we just like he cried. So, yeah, yeah, he did. He that's did. how. That's how much he hasn't scored. He cried. Yeah, right. right. Well, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on because our striker is Dominic Calvin Lewin, and like I actually like DCL again. I'm a glasses half full guy, but he's kind of been shit in the bed this season. And he does a job. There's there's the two players I'm most worried about next week if they perform to their yeah full capabilities are Njai and no. um, Neil McNeil. Yeah. I, I think that those two guys are the ones who really make you tick going forward if they're on it. Yeah. Um, and there are some other players I like, like I like Harrison when he's fit and when he's playing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, I've seen, I think we've played you guys before when like Kiate, not Kiate, sorry, um, Decore just has one of his games where he looks like a world-class player. Then he goes and yeah. looks like he, you know, doesn't know how his legs work the next game, but he'll play well against us. So, 
yeah you, you've got guys who can turn it on i think the consistency thing is probably the most frustrating thing i guess for you right. where you've got you know you, you know that you've got players who can do it but then it just depends yeah. which one show up <laughs> it, lee you nailed it it's like how is it that like dcl who was he's got a cap for england like how does he not how is he not a guy you're worried about our striker like and yet you're worried about you know um i mean i get it jack harrison and the lot like you, uh, you also didn't mention tarkovsky which i thought was interesting but it's like yeah it's like consistency but like dcl like dice only plays one man at the top and it's dcl and mm. we need more offense but i think dice is obsessed with defense and a clean sheet and he likes to score off set pieces he's probably he's on an everton budget so he's probably paying his open mic set piece writer with the <laughs> drink tickets and exposure but it's like and probably like it, 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 everton's a bit of a bringer show if you think about it so i don't know lee i you it's baffling like consistency is one thing but i will say like if you had to predict for next next week what are your thoughts who give, give me a prediction i hope i'm not jumping the gun here ian <laughs> i mean I, I, can I, let, let me just admit that lee has got everton on his three-point list Ooh. like you know how you have a, a enemy list of like yeah. like these yeah. people gonna get it when i come up like right everton's on that shit because at home when you're southampton you have to figure out like where you're gonna get your points from yeah and he did mention your team last week sorry to snitch but yeah. go ahead. No, i mean we, we've not won a game this season and our next two games are Everton and Wolves. And, you know, I think when you're in our position, anyone who is in the bottom half of the league and we're <laughs> playing at home, like you have to, you have to target that for a win. Yeah. Um, and that's not like being disrespectful to the other clubs because you, you could easily turn up and, and give us, you know, a comfortable beating if it, if we're not on form and you are. That's the Premier League in general. Um, but I'm going to be, I'm, I mean, I went to the game against City at the weekend. It gave me um, a cause for optimism with how we played. So I'm going to stick my neck out and say the losing streak, the winless streak is coming to an end. We're going to win 2-1. No, no, I'm going to say it. The, oh, the, damn. The, the losing streak. Two, two one win. Two, two one, one win for Everton. Let me let me <laughs> ask you what gave you confidence? What did you see in the game this week in your in your one nothing your your valiant one nothing loss? It was a it was mm. a good good looking ass loss for you. Like what you <laughs> it was. It was because like, I was watching yeah. that game and another game and I was like, wait a minute, it's you, you saw the first goal going in like five minutes. So it was like, oh, mm. it's about to rain. And it dried up the crazy thing is we we started that game really well like we came out and we were we were wanting to get on the ball and, and we were doing stuff like we we almost sprung uh dibbling out wide a couple of times and then you know Lana was getting on the ball in the middle then all of a sudden they scored that goal and I was like oh no here we go <laughs> this is you know this is Man City they score one then they they don't stop um, you know, I thought that was, I thought, okay, we're just going to have a good first four minutes and that's it. Um, but then after the goal, you know, we, we kept trying to do our thing and weirdly, like it was, it was, cause I wasn't sure how we were going to approach this game. I know Martin doesn't really deviate too much from his, his preferred style of play, but like we were playing out, we were playing through them. Like Aaron Ramsdale was, was putting his foot on the ball and like trying to lure the press from their players. And then we were like playing through the lines, getting the oh, liner on the ball, getting other people on the ball. And yeah, I was like, okay, this is, you know, this is working today. Um, we rode our luck a couple of times with a couple of chances they had. Like in the first half, Ramsdale made a good save from Kovacic as well. Mm -hmm. Then like just for half time, we, you know, we, we moved the ball quickly. We we sprung Archer in behind and he got through 1v1 and I'm like, oh, okay, this is this has got to be it. This has got to be the chance. Um, but he hit the bar and I was like, you're not going to get many of those at sea. <laughs> um so, you know, we are where we are. And uh, yeah, second half, we rode our luck again a little bit, a couple of times, a couple of cleared off the line. and But for the most part, like, you know, we we just did our thing. And, and towards the end, we had like a flurry of set pieces and we brought on um, Paul Onoachu, who's massive. And we didn't quite make the most of those set pieces, which was a little bit frustrating. But yeah, I mean, overall, we, we went toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. And, you know, you could see there was interviews afterwards that I saw with Pep and with Bernardo Silva where they were just praising us. Um, 
you know Pep saying that his players had to run a lot and they don't they don't normally <laughs> they don't normally have to do that because but he's like we we made them do it and yeah I mean stats wise 57% possession Man City had which I'm sure in most of their home games they're going to be around 70 to 80 um so you know I think we've we've done well there and you know we've we've gone there and and given them a game which was more than I expected I don't even know why I bought a ticket for that game is is what I was saying before because I was like this feels like a very stupid decision to spend money on a ticket and driving to but Manchester and back to watch to watch a bloodbath yeah <laughs> and uh yeah I was pleasantly surprised and it was um you know obviously still disappointing that we lost because I feel like almost at the end when we were cause at the end we we were pressuring them and like Edison was kicking long at times <laughs> and I was like oh we you know they're they're nervous <laughs> I was like they're nervous um but we you know, we didn't have the quality in that game to actually you know make it count so I'm hoping in a home game you know we scored two at uh, home in the last game against um against Leicester we just unfortunately collapsed so the mentality's got to be right if we're going to get anything from Everton because we can't afford to do that again. Um, Maybe you guys are having a mentality spike too. Because in that game, you lost to, who was that to last week? Leicester. You were a man down, right? No. Oh, we, oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, we were in the second yeah, half. So yeah, so it wasn't like a straight up like collapse. Like it's, you you have one less man in a team that's already... The red card was part of the collapse. We were 2-1 down. Or we were 2-1 up mm-hmm. when the red card came. The red card was a penalty that made it 2-2. Um, but that's tough, so it was, you know. It was it was part of the collapse. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know, the manager changed the team around a little bit. He made a couple of changes. Um, Jack Stevens just come back off the ban that he he was on a three game ban after trying to take Garnacho's knee off um, mm-hmm. in the game against United. So he came back and he actually gave us a lot more oh, yeah. sort of calmness in the defense and that Lallana, guy. That's yeah. your calm guy. <laughs> it is, yeah. It's, it's, it's a very out of character when he tried to cripple Garnacho. <laughs> um, but having Lalana in there as well, he hasn't started. He didn't, he didn't start our last two games. And having him in there just gave us a bit of composure on the ball as well. Because, yeah, he, he talks to the other players around him as well and helps us with our playing out. So, yeah, having those guys back um, gave us something. And, yeah, it would be, it'd be interesting to see. Because I think we've, I don't, I, can't, I don't know if we've actually kept our team the same for consecutive games this season. Um, but it felt weird because, you know, we went to Arsenal at the Emirates a few weeks back and and played well, went one new up. And then, you know, they, they overran us towards the end. But that game looked like a turn in the corner mentality wise for me. Then we had the collapse against Leicester and then a really good performance at the Etihad. So it's like, what are we doing? We're playing well against the big teams away from home, admittedly still not getting the wins, but then we're just crumbling at home um yeah it's it's a weird one to figure out but i'm hoping we can figure it out this weekend all right let me just ask chris since we're yeah. on like the game next week yeah what do you think are your odds what what are your strengths next week what and do you think are you well, looking no. at are, is is southampton on your disrespectful list of like this is our three <laughs> points i mean not to disrespect south the saints in front of lee but it's like it's like yeah the, this is one when you're looking at the table <laughs> simple table math but i mean who knows, I, I can't right? argue, i can't argue that like we haven't won a game this season yeah. everyone should be targeting a win against us yeah uh, I, I, i'm not even taking that as disrespect the table you know mm-hmm. the table is the table yeah yeah and i mean you have to imagine right the players on the bus they're like we we got to win this. <laughs> I, I mean, but I mean, look at like uh, Crystal Palace beat, you know, um, Tottenham today. So it's like clearly anything can happen. I do think Everton's going to Everton. Like the, I've got a little bit of hope because in the last 10 minutes of the game yesterday, maybe 20 minutes, Jared Branthwaite came off the bench and you know uh, he's our young gun who like he's a defenseman and actually man you's been eyeing him they yeah. oh we, we to, know him we know him. yeah yo we know you do yeah you guys uh there's rumors actually that they're gonna buy and try and buy him again in the january transfer window and that you guys would be willing to pay the man you tax that's typical so, so, nah yeah. hopefully I, i'd be i'd be upset if we did that to yeah. be honest like when we didn't buy him yeah. This this 
transfer window. I was like, good. I'm glad we didn't like let them get us. I don't I don't like being finessed. Yeah. You know, that's a horrible feeling. And then yeah. like he's not even available for you guys. So then he wouldn't have been available. We'd have been finessed and then he would have not been available. Available, so yeah. So it's fine. Yeah. And I like Yoro, the guy that we got. Yeah. So uh, honestly so, so like next week win or lose or tie. What you got? Honestly, Lee, you're going to love this. I don't know why, but I just don't have a lot of confidence in uh, in uh, in Everton right now. Like, I think we might be handed an L and Southampton will get its first win of the season. I mean, the way we play, the, the way we played against Fulham yesterday was trash, you know. Um, Where's Fulham in the table? Fulham is they're like upper. They're like ninth or eighth or something, aren't they? Yeah, it's probably like, been one of the best teams to watch the season. Yeah, they yeah, just haven't like... gotten enough points yet. Yeah, yeah, but so yeah, maybe it, it will be different against Southampton. But I'm I'm predicting an L because we I don't know. Look, there's something about Dyche Ball. I actually like Sean Dyche. I'm in this corner. There's all this talk that when Fried can group. Uh, takes over Everton if they do that they're going to get rid of Dyche I wish they wouldn't I just wish Dyche would be a little bit more offensive um mm -hmm. the man loves a, a clean sheet um but yeah I don't know Everton's gonna Everton so I'm gonna go I'm gonna predict uh Southampton's first win of the season will come against <laughs> either Everton. you really you're just saying that and secretly you're hoping for the win well yeah I'm hoping. or you're like it's the first time on a podcast. Let me take it easy. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm hoping for the win, Ian. I just like, what are we? I'm an Evertonian. Like, we only ever know. All right, right, right. You know, we only know being up to Bournemouth 2 0 and Bournemouth sco scoring three goals <laughs> in the last 10 minutes of the game. I mean, it, this is what it's like to be. A, we had Friedkin Group was going to buy us like in August and then they pulled out because they saw our massive debt sheet. So I don't even know. It, like Everton's going to Everton. I unfortunately live and often die by that saying. So I mean, I'm <laughs> hope, uh, would I love an Everton? Of course I would. But like, I don't know, man. You know, so I'm, I think, I think Southampton's going to win, you know, but I think, I think to turn it to you, you know, we should take odds on. Uh, not just if Man U is going to win their next game, but if Eric Ten Hag is going to be the manager come tomorrow. I, I was going to go to Chelsea first. Go just talk it. about something happy. Go for uh, it. Because, <laughs> like, listen, the way you and I have been playing, like, mm -hmm. if I didn't love football, I would just yeah. Yeah. stop. But, you know, one good thing to watch that's not United is Chelsea and Cole Palmer. Yeah, too yeah. soon. And yeah. then also the El Clasico. That was a good, just just good ass football, you know right. what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. we got we got Neil on the pod. We, we, we're gonna get to Man United and the disappointment of that today. But let's, Neil, how how you feeling, man? Cole Palmer, assisting or trip or, or assist from the assist, the assist, the assist. pre assist, <laughs> yeah, pre assist. That's, that's the that's the dope. Yeah, scoring. Yeah, you beat a legit team, and you you. Yeah, let's talk about the good part first, then we get to your coach. How you feel? <laughs> no, it's, I mean, obviously, a good three points early in the morning, 7 a.m. start here. And um, a couple of the other results also fell our way. Uh, Villa to um, Arsenal, Liverpool split points, uh, Tottenham last. So, yeah, I, I want to say United's last had two, but you know, it looks like. You know, not even anywhere near. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got nothing to do with you, bro. That's all you. <laughs> yeah, no, but you know, like this from beginning from the Liverpool game, this is our tough period where we play, um, play Liverpool. Now we have Newcastle back to back in the league and the cup. Then we have, you know, we we still have the great uh, and glorious <laughs> Manchester United. <laughs> so, so let me did, do they did they give you the three points already, or are they gonna <laughs> show next? No, week? but are but, but I will I will say it? this. No, but I'll say this. Like, how many times have we spoken about this? And it seems like those are three give me points. I will never end up beating United, even when United are the worst in the last couple of years. So I'm not thinking those. I think it's worse. Worse now. I know, man. We'll we'll find out. We'll find out. 
but no it is a good game and uh, we made like a few mistakes at the back but um i thought in terms of the forward play and the wing play we, he did something really interesting he put reese james on left back duty and uh, malagusto stayed at right back so kukurea did play and he stuck to remember we were talking about this the last part that he what's going to happen when uh, you know uh, next game with enzo he stuck to lavia and caicedo in the middle of the park so uh because last last game was right after the international break so sometimes the south american south american players mm. they don't put them right in but this was the conscious choice right so this is looks like the uh midfield he's going in which i kind of like um yeah and the two goals mm. i mean you know cole palmer like what like you can't really say anything more that's not already been said about this guy like he's he's pure magic and he's just so um nonchalant about it and he has he has a vision he sees things that others don't see like at the moment he took the turn if you like you know just like just forward the play like at 0.25x mm-hmm. you you still can't see how he's seeing it <laughs> like it's literally a quick look up and he takes another touch to take uh, you know the 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 midfield out of the game mm-hmm. and livramento has is completely sold to dummy and you know pedro does neto does really well he um, he does kick in and uh, uh that cross and jackson scores jackson now i think behind he's only behind uh, haland so in terms of like you know goal scored uh, and you offense. still don't believe he's good enough no like i've always said like he he is good at everything can his finishing get better that was a real question cuz if your finishing can't get better as a striker no matter what else you do you you hold a place good you know you're assisting you're you're adding physical physicality uh, that end of the pitch but if your finishing isn't great um, you're always going to have problems holding on to your spot but but his this finishing was can't really complain. Yeah, his finishing was terrible last season, but I, I knew it would get better. And there's two yeah. things he would have did last season with that goal. He would have been offside and or he would have missed it at the same time. He would have taken a second uh, another touch. Yeah. Yeah. This time, you know, first shot in. And um again, the second goal comes out of uh, you know, some good work uh by Caicedo in getting the ball. Um the press has been really good the enzo meresca press i think has been really good it's been a, like we were a good pressing team under uh, pochettino too but this has been slightly different it's that those packs are really well defined now it felt a little scattered under pochettino um so i think we are like really reaping the rewards of it and a lot of the goals that we score a lot of the chances that we get it this could have been like we could have scored a few more like you know um you dominated uh, them yeah yeah i think there were spells where we really dominated and there were spells with newcastle you know they looked like they could score uh, to like the goal they actually scored then isak i don't know how he missed it uh like that one and on he had against sanchez and then he like he yeah. he had two newcastle players on the other side and i think he just looked up and saw oh this long stuff this is pre saudi era i'm not passing to one of those guys <laughs> so <laughs> he, he 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 just he just had to do his own thing and cuz that could have been the goal and now as just chelsea fan you'd be like that, that those are two points dropped so again like not getting too excited but it this is a classic premier league performance and it's good to get the three points you got to get and excited it, man <laughs> you, you you have a player that fans and players and pundits from other teams are talking about. And he's delivering. Yeah, yeah. And he learned from last week when Liverpool had a man on him. They figured out how to get him loose and how to like deal with that. So he, even he grew in the space of like yeah. a week. It's like, uh, I, I mean, I mean, shit. Oh, I'm yeah, sure. for sure. I, I am definitely copying the Palmer shirt and wearing it on Pacific Beach. I, I'll, I'll do that. Uh, yeah. right. <laughs> uh, anybody else have anything to say about this game and then I'll talk about Maresca. I want I'll ask you yeah. about Maresca. 
and Martin's here. The audacity of Martin to show up. The balls. You know what? I, you know, <laughs> kudos for you to show up. With Spurs <laughs> yeah. loss. That's yeah. a real one. On a Spurs loss. The United you, you lost and Southampton lost, so I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we always show up. We show up when we all draw. <laughs> and then we got we got a uh, Chris. He's an Everton fan, so that's Martin right there. Notice how Ian didn't say my last name. Yeah, this time. I, yeah. yeah. He's learning quick. Yeah, I'm like, if you can, you want to try and attempt to say his last name, Martin. Yeah. What's the last name? Sorry, uh, Trani. <laughs> There you go, uh, Italian. You got it. He, he he really Italian. He grew up in Europe. He grew up in he Europe. Knows, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good start for me. But now <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna make some some uh, soccer related points uh, about Chelsea, and it will uh, it will be not just about Chelsea, but it will be about Chelsea first. So I think you know sometimes it takes a while to find the right manager, uh, and I think Chelsea found the right manager. I think the the previous managers they had they didn't uh, they didn't do a very good job unfortunately, and I feel like uh, we're probably a bad fit for this team. And I think they found the right manager. It's still it's still kind of chaotic as a, they're still chaotic as a club, but I think on the field they're actually doing better because the manager put some structure in it. And I'll tell you something, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna go uh, with a with a larger thought. So so I also watch NBA, right? I watch NBA, and everybody was saying that the Lakers will never uh, win anything because you know LeBron is 40 years old and uh, Anthony Davis is you know not good enough or whatever. And then they hired a coach, uh, JJ Redick, and they're 3-0 at the start of the season. And everybody's thinking, like, how is it possible they had the same team? And last two seasons, they were a very average team. And, and everybody was giving excuses. Oh, it's their players are not good enough. The, all the injuries, this and that. And, and sometimes you just have to change the manager. Because the guy who was there for the last two years, unfortunately, wasted this team. And, and we can, we, you can see that with JJ Redick. So now the Chelsea did that, and it's working. Now is the question when Man U will finally wake up and do that because it's clearly not working at Man U and it might be just as simple as to change the manager for Man U to start winning. I think I think it's a very it's pretty much the same situation Chelsea is in right now where they did change a manager which a lot of people said that it's a mistake to move on from Pochettino because Pochettino is, has all this pedigree and he's one of the you know best brains in soccer and he's done this and that he's done well with us. But sometimes it's just a bad fit. And maybe Ten Hag is a bad fit for Man U. And, and they don't realize that. Because I feel like with someone else with this roster, with these players, we'll do much better. And I think Chelsea proves the point that you, sometimes you just have to do find the right manager and the things will change drastically. Uh, just a quick counterpoint to Martin talking about the Lakers going 3-0. and mm. And, uh, you know, I think... Uh, going a little bit overboard with how much that means but that's what Spurs fans do is a, a, a small a small good start to a season um, and oh you know, they're champions they're going to be you know <laughs> yeah the good team after three games uh, yeah. Yeah, Spurs does they don't need a large sample size to make a decision yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll, to, call, we'll talk, to call it for the season We'll talk after yes. the Lakers losing a playing game in uh, in a few months. Uh, but we'll, we'll see. I was gonna say, I wanted to. I want to ask you about Maresca. Mm. Then I'll talk about United. Then Chelsea United play next week. We can all weigh in on who we feel has got that. Uh, so is Maresca's statements? Uh, I don't know if anybody has them and can read them. Is yeah. Is it? He said. I don't want to misquote them. Can you can you mm. say them? So uh, we can address let them. Let me see if I can make them up. Yeah. So he said that's a weird thing. I I unfortunately I don't have the question. So I want to see in what context he said it. Mm. But true, true. He pretty much said. Um, I spoke with him. He's referring to Reese James, of course, who's the club captain. Like I spoke with him and I expected more from him in terms of leadership inside the changing room and for different kinds of things. So he's on the way, he's doing well, he's progressing. But from Reese, I expected more also in terms of leadership. Now, I will say some of this in my experience, like having seen so many of these, you know, foreign coaches, it could be so simple things that get lost in translation. For example, he says, and I expected more from him. I expected more. It could just be he's trying to say, I expect more. 
But when you say expected, it's like you've already made a decision that in the past tense that, you know, this is what I thought would happen. It didn't happen. And now my mind is made up. Instead, if, you, if you're saying expect, you're kind of, you know, you, you're paving the road for the future. You're, you're trying to say, hey, this is, you know, this is my vision of what leadership should be. And hopefully uh, that's what happens here. Because the thing with Reese James is that he did miss, um, um, you know, I think he got back into training only about a, maybe like less than a week before the Liverpool game. So it's, it's really uh, fresh. And when you're not in training, you're not around the changing room. You're not around the you know you're not around the uh, training grounds. Um, so, uh, and it this has been an uh, well uh, or issue or whatever. Like you know when Reese was made the club captain, I think it was between him and uh, Mount because those were the two you know candidates who looked like they'd be Chelsea for a while. And the thing with Reese always was that he has a personality on the field. He's, you know, obviously physical. He gets into do words. He gets into people's faces. But he's not a very vocal captain. He's not a John Terry. He's not going to be grabbing people up by the collar and, uh, you know, um, making them literally like... I, I I remember a clip of Terry where he's literally pushing another defender. I think it was Ivanovic or somebody onto a tackle. So Reese isn't that kind of uh, uh, vocal boisterous leader. He's almost like a Gen Z version of John Terry. He's, he's, he's much more, um, you know, quieter. And that's just his personality. But, you know, we've had great captains. Like Aspilicata, you know, was kind of like that. So if I have no problems with Maleska having taking issue with some of, you know, Lee Reese's personality traits and how uh, that probably need to change to become a great captain, I just wish... This is a conversation that happened in the locker room and not in the press conference. But you do, because... do think it's a bad idea for him to say that. Yeah, because, yeah, like, dude, you're also the guy who made Enzo Fernandez, gave Enzo Fernandez the armband after that whole, uh, you know, racism thing that happened over the summer. So it's not like your judgment is crystal clear either. So, <laughs> you know, uh, I. Yeah, I just wish I have no problem with him making this issue. Just make it behind closed doors. Uh, we don't need to know this. Uh, let me ask you a question. Where's Maresca from? Is he Argentinian? Italy. Is he he's, Italy? He's, he's Italian. He's Italian, but uh, one really interesting thing about him, he was at West Brom uh, at the age of 18 when he, in his playing career. His oh, first so professional he's... club was West Brom. So That's where he made his professional debut. Okay. So he, I mean, obviously it's a transfer. He's not through the academy there, but uh, so he has been around England. So you know, his English. Yeah. So so this good. English language barrier. Yeah. Thing, it's not not really sound. It sounds. But like you know, sometimes message. when you pick up a language as an adult, at eighteen you're still you're an adult, right? You mm -hmm. pick up the words really well, but sometimes the grammar, um, you know, the you might lose out on some of those subtleties. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, also, he, he was only to, he was only here for one. he was only here for two years. Two years. He was only yeah. here for two years, and then he didn't come back until he coached um, at Man City, which was like twenty something years later. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, so he's a he's a naturalized British citizen. Sounds like. <laughs> uh, hopefully, when Martin comes back, he puts on yeah. as a ring light because we are losing you. So <laughs> I just wanted to address that, Martin. You got a ring light? Yeah, or... Give me like fifteen more minutes. I'll, I'll oh. put it up. Or any light. Yeah. <laughs> Martin's trying to make it to the to the off peak cars. Yeah, like you can't the, the, zoom the from inside of a coffin because because <laughs> when I cut to like the 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 reels, like your <laughs> thing is gonna look dark and it looks cheap. <laughs> I darken myself for a reason. Right. So what? <laughs> I, I make myself uh, invisible for a reason. You know. I mean, it, it, normally I wouldn't argue with you about light. But... But yeah, this makes the Zoom look terrible. But anyway. I still think Martin's in witness protection. <laughs> He's got those curtains. He's got always, those curtains always, closed at all hours. That was the always, case. I didn't say So, damn. Well, I guess my answer to that. Let's see if Enzo Marino, Italian mob style, is making a move. Like I watch a lot of mob movies, and <laughs> when they want to get rid of somebody, somebody yeah. starts saying. This is what so and so has been saying about you. You know, mm -hmm. they they 
they they what's the name of that, that, that movie they enter what was that name of that movie Good. they yeah. incept the idea in public yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah so let's see if he's incepting the idea in public mm. so later on like you said he might have already made his mind up and uh, let me just introduce the idea because changing a club captain is big and yeah. Maresco's the majority of his relationship with Chelsea has been without Reese James like you said he's been injured a lot so he's like I, I, I don't need this guy for a captain I'm doing great <clears throat> he's only captain the one game he captained we lost that's one of our <laughs> two losses like uh, you know and, uh, and he's being unforgiving of the mistake from last week when he didn't cover Curtis but it's I think it's not a very subtle inception, though. <laughs> no, no. But you know, you wanna, you wanna put you. You're gonna knock off somebody, and you're gonna, you need his friends to knock you off, and everybody to agree with it. So you want to start painting the picture of this guy being you know, like everybody's like, nah, I disagree with you, but it, it, the idea works on you, and then, and it has to be a strong yeah. inception because it's Reese James. He's won Champions League with. This team, he's a he's and he's a, been he's performing well. Like since he came back, I think he had a strong game last game. And mm -hmm. today, we would have lost that game. He made like you know one clear off the line clearance mm -hmm. and oh, another one tackle right when you know it looked like the uh, the 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 Newcastle player was ready to pull the trigger. So he's and again in a new position. So at least on the pitch, he's he is performing and he's not giving you know Maresca a lot of chances. What if the new position is to make him look bad? You know what I mean? Like, what if Mariska is that devious? Like, to say, you know, I have better right backs and I like Gusto over there. And it's like, let's, yeah. let's just ease him out, you know? Like, what if your guys are selling players, right? And you you need to, either, either this season you sell a hotel or a youth academy player. You need money to balance your books. So it could be, I don't know. I just don't trust the guy, like you said, who made mm. Enzo Fernandez straight off a racist rant tirade club captain yeah. it's ridiculous so i think he didn't make him club captain i will correct you on that he just gave him the armband for that's, a few games that's, that's... <laughs> but I... but yeah i mean i mean you know like uh the thing is like all these things about Mariska, including stuff that we're seeing on the pitch all these wins you know the style of play i just feel everything is just too early to decide upon right. like he's saying all these things right like uh, because he's not under the spotlight at uh, Leicester. And he was an assistant coach before that. So the, I don't think people really know what his leader managing style is. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm prepared to, like, wait a little bit more uh, before deciding a few things on him. All right, cool. All right, I'll just get in the United stuff and then we'll talk about... Uh, yeah. Uh, so United, we lost to West Ham 2-1. Uh and Martin was talking about us changing manager. Like sometimes you just need the right manager. And it's, I agree with Martin as far as like this squad could be like, I like this squad. It's strong on paper. I feel like we have some good technical players and I do feel like he's done that for us and brought us two trophies and I'm always defending him, but I did joke around on this podcast, but I did really mean it. I was like, Hey man, when you don't play a mod, I'm Ten Hag out, you know. Mm -hmm. And I, and I, you know, I even wrote that on the Good Vibes John thing the other day. He had a post, and he didn't play him midweek. And it's like these are games a mod could have helped you win. So then, when you lose today, we'll look at the crazy penalty decision. Everybody's mm -hmm. going about their business, continuing the game, and John Oliver, I think in the booth, Mr. Var hits up the ref and say, hey, we want to take, want you to take a look about at this. Because he knows once you go take a look, you're going to overturn it. Like, I've never seen, and I've seen this a lot where I saw him watch that video looking for what the VAR booth called him over for. He's like, yeah, this is the call I ignored the first time. Like, there's no reason to turn this over. But now that you called me over, like I have to, it's easier for me to change my decision because after we get off work, after I punch out, I might have to write an apology letter because you showed me the footage. 
So it's like there was nothing in that. Nothing. The only thing in that was Danny Ings launching himself into the lit. There, there was nothing in that. So that was crazy. But besides that, we should have just scored. Like some of the opportunities were missed. The, miss, the when the goal was wide open, and mm -hmm. I forget who the player, but he which time? There's so many times. Oh my god! Like yeah, the, the, the dialogue, the, the, the dialogue dialogue chance yeah, that was was, was was disgusting. Yeah, yeah. quite yeah. frankly, to to miss that. But it, that's it the was thing, like viral in a bad way. <laughs> everyone's everyone's just obviously like calling for Ten Hag's head yeah. after this game in like the press and like you know people online and stuff. It's like. He didn't make Dalot miss that chance. Like, he didn't make Bruno miss an easy chance or two as well. He didn't make VAR give a terrible, terrible penalty. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, he kind of has my sympathy in this game because, like, none of the things that happened are really down to him. You could say, he, you know, he doesn't need to pick the players that make those, those poor choices in front of goal, but he hasn't got... Yeah. that much choice right. and they're players who you know you don't expect Dalot to find himself in that <laughs> position necessarily so um but like you know I, I, I just feel for the guy because there's a lot of bad luck involved in that that isn't his making kind of thing like in terms of do I feel like he prepped his team to the right level to go out there and and get a win I think the answer is yes yeah based on the chances that United had. And then, you know, it's, it's, it's on the players once they, once they're out there. Um, so yeah, I do, I do feel for him. Right. And I agree with you. Like I, I wouldn't fire him for this game. I would probably hmm. fire him for not firing up the team for other games. Like we have three wins, two draws, and four losses. Four, four losses. Yeah. And, 14th in the table. I mean, uh, I just... hold on, Martin. Let me finish. You, you, I know you want to pile on. You will get your chance. <laughs> no, you can't wait. You probably just came off for that. <laughs> but, but I feel like, like there's just other games when, and I've said this before. You, you onslaught was at Arsenal, and I know he can give a good halftime talk because he mm -hmm. changed the energy of his team from the first half to the second half. Like I knew. He talked to them. And then even before the second half started, he had those players on the pitch, like doing drills, like the game. It was like the first half, like setting their, their mind right physically and mentally, you know? And it's like, we're just like walking out casually to start the second half. Like we got this. And it's like, you, you, we, I like how Arteta winds Arsenal up before the beginning of each game, like the way they start. And there's games that we tied this season. Like we lost the Brighton game. And I swear, man, like up until the moment we lost that game, I was like, we got this team. This team ain't shit. We just need to turn our mentality up and we and know that we can take these guys. And that just wasn't there. And it's just not there a lot of times. They showed up last week when the ref gave us, this is what we are. We're not... We don't have, it's not, I'm not saying we don't have any mentality. We don't have a winning mentality to like, let's punch these people in the face and keep punching them in the face. Like we'll punch you in the face if you punch us in the face, but this is a punch someone in the face event. You can't wait for them to punch you first before you punch them. So to come out and wait to get hit, to hit people is like, we need someone to give our team punch him in the face first mentality and keep punching. Now, what you got, Martin? Oh, a lot, a lot. Well, first of all, the Leeds defense uh, reminds me of a uh, brothers Menendez defense, you know, like at the end of the day, you know, you can, you can create all those excuses, all that this happened, that happened, you know, they pull the trigger, they kill their parents. There's no point to debate that. What Same are you talking about? I'm uh, lost. I'm talking, I'm talking about the facts. The fact is you're 14th, 14th in the table. And you can't blame if someone missed the chance. Who shot you're... who in the face, though? Huh? Who shot their parents <laughs> in the face? Uh, I'm talking that the, the least defense reminds me of the defense of Menendez brothers. That's what I oh, said. Yeah. yeah. Well, at the end of the day, they did kill their parents, you know? So you can create all those narratives about things happening or not happening. But at the end of the day, 
that's the fact. And the fact in terms of menu is that third year in a row, our, uh, the menu, menu is not doing well in the Premier League and it's actually regressing every single year. Every single year is worse. Right now it's worse than last year. The last year was worse than previous year uh, in the Premier League. 14th is unacceptable. Of course, players will miss chances on every team. They will miss chances. Of course, there will be some decisions sometimes, you know, going against you. Sometimes they go for you. So but let's ignore all that to make your point. No, there's no structure on the team. There's no style. There is no uh, like a group of players that, that you can rely on every single week. There's no strategy. Like you said, I'm at the start of the season. Now, where is I'm at? You know, there's just no, there's no cohesiveness. Plus, he's constantly fighting with uh, different people. He he lost a bunch of players uh, before. So that's just a bad, bad fit for United. And they have to move on, you know. Otherwise, we'll be here on this podcast three, four, five, six months from now talking exactly the same conversation. And probably we'll say, Lee will say, okay, they're 12th in the table, but they're creating chances, you know. Yeah, and I say you still have to turn on your light or get a ring light. That's what I say. I like how yeah. he's just comparing and clean the land to like to murderers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I wish we were murderers. We'd be, we'd be, ten, we'd be, we'd be in the top half of the table. Chris, you're going to say something about United? Yeah, it's just like... And how dare you, by the way? But go ahead. <laughs> no, it's just like <laughs> Ten Hag, unfortunately, the stage is so big for Man U that I think there's two things working against Ten Hag. The first is that the stage is so big for Man U that he kind of can't afford losses in the way that us lower table, sort of <laughs> Rockhampton, <laughs> Everton, you know, Dice can... Them. Yeah, I know. That was a cheap job, but... <laughs> Dice can, you know, be up 2-0 to Bournemouth and then blow the lead and then be like Everton's going to Everton and we're all like, well, we knew that. But then, like, but Ten Hag is just on too big of a stage. I mean, Man U's the biggest club in the world. They are the New York Yankees of Premier League football. And then the other thing is, like, I just think, um, yeah, I, 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 I just think that, like, the FA Cup bought him some time, but the climate won't. I mean, it's kind of the same point. It's just the climate there. It it doesn't allow him to kind of like uh, managers are a scapegoat in this league. Sometimes, you know, when, when you win, the, the man's a genius. When you lose, uh, it's all the manager's fault. And, um, and kind of, unfortunately, Martin is right in some ways in that like, yeah, for where Man U is to be, that they've got as many losses as Everton right now, you know. So you're saying so, he'd make a great Spurs manager, but not a Man United manager. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anything else on the United? Uh, you want to talk about? Uh, how do you feel about your chances next week, uh, Neil? Coming in triumphant. How many in a row you won? And you play us one. Oh, with you guys. How many games you in a row? You oh, yeah, yeah, just one. Yeah, but you, how do you feel about playing us next week? Podcast. No, I mean on like you know with footballing logic, where to fall true, we should be overwhelming favorite favorites, and we should be coming away with three points. But it's still United. It's still at Old Trafford, and uh, funny things have happened for us there in the past. Um, so yeah, I. I just hope we play a game of control um, because I still don't think we've had that perfect game yet. Like our two best wins this season have been against Brighton and uh, I think Wolves. And in both those games in the first half, it was a basketball game. Yeah. So I think we're still looking for that perfect game where, you know, minute one to minute 90 performance, execution, both ends of the pitch, is at a really high level and this control and i think mareska is particularly looking for that because he keeps like even after today he keeps saying yeah but you know we could have like controlled a few things a little better so maybe it'll happen against you guys i hope you don't psych your manager before that um uh, we'll, we'll see uh but yeah i, I really back our chances i uh, we should be getting those three points but I've been in this situation many times in the last six, seven years and haven't come up with the points. So, yeah, um, ho hopefully, you know, Cole Palmer, Nicholas Jackson keep keep their form going. I would really, really hope. Wait a second. Can, can Jaden Sancho play for us? Yeah, 
I Usually if so. you're on loan, you can't play unless there's some, you know. Is, is, that, is that why you think your coach started Neto this week to prepare him for next week? Could be. Um, yeah, because we do have midweek cup game versus Newcastle, so. Mm. But, yeah, okay. but also, I think Neto has played himself into the 11th, so you, so you never know. Met, Neto made two moves down the side last week in the second half, and they're like, all right, you're the is that how <laughs> finicky it is to lose your 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 starting position on that side of the pitch? He, he made two runs with his heads down. There's multiple times me you looked at him not pick his head up yeah. and miss passes. You actually could have won the game if he lifted his head up or just slowed down yeah. a little bit. And then all of a sudden, Sancho, you're out. That, that's that's I'd be pissed no, about Sancho. I, I wouldn't if I was a Chelsea fan, I wouldn't want Sancho playing in that game anyway. The game's at Old Trafford and he's never had a good game there. So <laughs> <laughs> give someone <laughs> give someone else a chance. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's the revenge, revenge mission. You know, that's how the you know, if you're really competitive, that's the game you want to play for sure. So and it would be funny if Sancho fires uh, Ten Hag, if he will if he will fire him i'm sure he will he will do a virtual high five with cristiano ronaldo when that happens <laughs> oh so hilarious uh yeah. i feel like the most we can get out that game is a tie even if we won i'm still leaning towards hey if you want to change the manager change the manager i think we got good players there i don't know what's happening i think he's good tactically he probably doesn't and even the tactical stuff or just like you you have to control the things you can control. And sometimes he doesn't do that. Like mm. play your best players. And sometimes some of the crazy stuff he does actually works. So it's, but it's tough. And I like, we, I don't blame him for finishing a last week because I know how many injuries we had. And it's weird, right? Leading into the Liverpool Arsenal game. I heard so many pundits and so many people talking about, Arsenal's injuries and make an excuse for Arsenal mm. to not win today and it's okay and then they draw it at home they're the favorite and they draw at home and everybody's giving them props as if like Liverpool had won the league like in the last year or two and they're the juggernaut that Arsenal has to stop and I'm like it is, this is just a weird slant the way things are viewed. Like you're looking at Arsenal's injuries and you disregard a season of Man United injuries. So he's like, yeah, well, injuries are part. Nobody said leading up to the game, well, injuries are part of the game. You know, they were like, man, it's going to be tough to beat them without Saka, without Odengard. And they started naming the five players that were out. But uh, we still got not as much injuries as last season, but. You know, just to have Mount, like, Mount ain't even played, bro. You you forget he's on the team. I forget Manu's on the team, you know? Yeah. 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 It, 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 so I know we had, it, and but maybe it's just the universe doesn't want him to be the coach. And let's get to the coach the universe wants us to have then. Fuck it. Who, who would you want instead of uh, Ten Hag, Ian? Uh, the coach of Atalanta. Hmm. Is, that, is, that is that Zamperini? Yeah, I can't say his name. You know, I'm bad with Italian um, names. Yeah. <laughs> um, have you seen the picture that people are going crazy about where it's um, Xavi at home with one of his kids and his kid oh, has a yeah. Man United shirt on? Uh, <laughs> so I've everyone's seen it. like, <laughs> I got a poster out of it already. It's on the, the wall. <laughs> Xavi would be fun. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, yeah. You know, it'd definitely be an improvement. There's like, no question. That's Gasparini, sorry, the Atalanta coach. Gasparini, Just yeah. correcting myself. I knew it had an Ini in it. <laughs> yeah. That's what I would have said if I knew how to pronounce Italian names. Uh, so you, we'll talk about Everton's game. Did, did we talk about it? Well, we just talked about you and Southampton. Yeah, yeah, we kind of covered it in there. Yeah. All right. So, Martin, what's up? Spurs <laughs> lost to Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace, who hasn't won a game all season at the bottom of the table. What the hell happened, bro? Bottom of the table, you know who's bottom of the table. Embarrassing. Big, what does what Martin always say? Big or major what? Big, cri big huge trouble. crisis. Huge, huge crisis. crisis. Huge, huge crisis. crisis. 
it's exactly what it's been the whole season. One one good game, one bad game, one good game, one bad game. Yeah, that's bipolar what... FC. That's Tottenham. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, listen, it's better bipolar than losing every game. Okay. <laughs> hey, that's consistent FC. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, listen, it's been disappointing so far, really disappointing in terms of, um, you know, I could I could make the same excuses as Menu does, that we have injuries, that Son wasn't playing. When Son is not playing, we're usually not very good. If he was playing one game, we won uh, we won a lot, the game against uh, West Ham. Then he's not playing again this this game, and, and clearly the team is not doing as well. I mean, I could use that excuse, but I don't want to use that excuse. I think part of... Part of uh, uh, what I'm a little bit afraid of that uh, some teams might figure uh, NG out, you know, so he might have to uh, readjust few things in terms of tactically because we are we are playing exciting football, we're we're pushing, you know, we're trying, you know, but sometimes it's just not the way it's, you can't always play like that, you know, you play like that against teams like United who are maybe uh, tactically uh, worse uh, and and have a manager that doesn't have a clue, <laughs> so you can play then you can play like that. But uh, but when you play a really good manager and uh, who is determined to not to lose the job, then uh, then it doesn't work that way. And and it was actually a very embarrassing game for for Tottenham. They were not playing well at all. I think it was a very bad game. It was kind of embarrassing, and and it, 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 there had to be some adjustments. I mean, if you're gonna bash the team, I guess. I mean, it, it, it was, you know, I, I, I don't want to be the, the only team on a podcast that loses. So when Tottenham <laughs> loses, uh, it kind of makes me feel happy. better. So I, I, I'm thanking Ange today, to be honest. <laughs> do, you, you, do you have any salt to kick in the wounds of uh, Tottenham's loss, Chris? I do. Oh, okay. All right, go ahead. You got it. Just... Ange needs to realize that you can't always play like six attackers um, <laughs> or five attackers. Like that team is so open when they lose the ball. Um, and also just, I mean, you know, coming from someone who's seen his team concede a few goals from trying to play out this season, um, the the build up to that goal was oh, chef's kiss. Just beautiful. The way Tottenham, <laughs> decided to completely panic at the back whilst trying to play out. Mm. Um, but also, like, I think massive credit has to go to Eza for that flick on the cross for the assist because that was a different level. So I'll give, I'll, I'll give Palace some credit there and him some credit rather than purely running down Tottenham. But, I mean, I was very happy when I saw the result, even though it makes life harder for us at the bottom because Palace were winless before that game. Oh. <laughs> but... You know, I mean, silver linings and all. I got to see Ange do another post-match interview where he sounded like he was going to go and, you know, like he was going to self-harm afterwards. So, <laughs> <laughs> so there it is. yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe play a double pivot once in <laughs> once this season and see if let's see if that helps away from home. Um, but you know, they had sixty-seven percent possession. They should have done more with it. But it's Spurs, so. Yeah, they're out dom teams all the time and it doesn't get them the full three points. You got anything, Chris, on this? No, I mean it does feel like sorry, Martin, I know we don't know each other, but or but it feels like, you know, Spurs are gonna spur. And uh I hate to take my Everton line and apply it to the spur. It's just like they they've been having actually I, I thought they were having a good start. And then today, I mean Crystal Palace was also due. I think that's the fun of the Premier League, right? Yeah. Like that's that's why again, like Everton versus Southampton next week. I went with Southampton because it's like there is a thing as being due in professional football. Uh so you know, it kind of felt like Crystal Palace just got what they needed. So, you know. Yeah. But you can, you can take as an Everton something else from us, please. Uh Richarlison, take him back. Take, take him back. <laughs> <laughs> you want back if you can. I, I know you won't, but <laughs> I don't know. He'll probably play better there. That's the thing. I mean, oh, awesome. sure. <laughs> he's, he's a solid player, you know? Yeah. Uh, what are the big games that next week? Is it Newcastle, Arsenal, and Liverpool, Brighton? Like, who else is, is bigger than that next week? We play Villa. Southampton, Everton oh. is bigger than that. 
Say again. <laughs> so Southampton Everton is bigger than that. We now it is. <laughs> yeah. So you're going to be available <laughs> next weekend, whether you get your ass whooped or not. I'm going to be uh, following another losing team. I'm flying next weekend to Arizona to watch the Chicago Bears play the um, uh, yeah the Arizona Cardinals. So uh, probably going to lose there too. We lost to the Commanders today. I just like you know just give me your losing teams, and that's <laughs> yeah. You, know. you lost to the Commandos. Who's the Commandos? Is that the ex? The uh, commander, Washington, D.C.? Yeah, Washington's uh, former Redskins. Oh. Yeah, now, now Commanders. Oh, yeah. okay. So, but I don't know. Uh, next week, I'm They changed like, their name to the group who killed the Redskins. Is that what they did? <laughs> 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 we can't, they won't let us use the Redskins. Uh, so let's get the let's Commanders. Get, let's get the Commanders. Yeah. yeah. So, I don't know. Uh. Thanks for having me on, though, Ian. This was fun. It was nice to meet you, too. Well, thanks, thanks, for, thanks for showing up, and uh, yeah. we'll see you in a few weeks whenever you can make it, all right? Absolutely. So. All right, fair. One. All right, Chris has got to go. We'll just uh, keep it moving. All right. Uh, I got to head out to you guys. All right. Have a good one. See you guys later. Uh, see ya. All right. Uh, yeah, some, there's some, definitely some big games next week. United Chelsea. I think it's got to be the biggest. Yeah, I mean, historically, <laughs> but uh, like the way we're playing, and, and, we, and you know, we talked about it. Like, I feel like the most we can get it, we can maybe we could uh, villa them, you know, <laughs> and, and and get a tie, and get all defensive on them. Uh, but there's a lot of big games next week, like yeah. Arsenal, Newcastle. I feel like is. Pretty mm -hmm. strong game. Newcastle just lost two in a row. They have to do something. It's at Newcastle, so you know, you know that's another thing. Like Arsenal has a really tough stretch. So let's see if they can. If they drop points here, it's like, you know, I feel like they would. Were, were they doing better last year this time, Arsenal? I think so. I think they're uh, doing slightly better. They're doing slightly better, and they didn't win. So. I think so. Yeah. They lose a lot of points in like last minutes. Uh, that's very unusual. Uh, uh, they lose. They, they lost points against City. They lost. Like, they lost points against Liverpool. They lost. They lose. They lost to Bournemouth. I think in the last 15 minutes of the game, they they're not finishing the, uh, the games well. I talked to my friend today uh, uh, that I didn't talk to in a couple of months, who is um, a huge Arsenal fan and a little bit of a conspiracy theorist. He <laughs> believes that the league uh, the league is against Arsenal. They want to make sure they're not gonna win. The title, uh, and and the, that's why it's rigged at the end of the games. Sounds like an Arsenal fan. <laughs> Sounds like I say there was there was there was no rigging involved when Trent played that ball down the side, and and Nunes made that great run, and then Salah made that great movement inside to receive the pass. You know, that's just a good goal. Curious, the, all the red cards that Arsenal is, Arsenal is getting is just to derail them, you know, <laughs> from, the, from the title. Yeah. I think it's just karma for the way Arsenal play sometimes. Like when they were two one up, they were throwing themselves to the ground a lot. Mm -hmm. They were doing a lot of a lot of the, the stuff they've been accused of doing. They were playing into that. So yeah. They should have won that one at home. Against Liverpool? Mm. Yeah. I, I just never thought they were gonna win it. Uh but uh Newcastle Arsenal, who anybody got in that one? Is it going to be Newcastle? I feel like Newcastle will make them drop points. I don't, I don't know if they beat them. I don't know what's nah. kind of wrong with Newcastle. Nah, you think Arsenal will win? Nah, I think Arsenal got to do it. I think Newcastle will have, have gone off the boil a bit. They've gone off the boil, but because I know Arsenal's going to attack them, this is perfect for <clears> Newcastle. <throat> you know? Because the last it's be time... one of those games where Joe Linton turns into Zidane. Yeah. And he, <laughs> he has those. I don't think he played this week. That's what, that was the thing, too. Uh, Liverpool, Brighton. Yeah, that's going to be a good watch, that one. That's a good watch. But it's at Anfield. Uh, I feel like Liverpool could do this, but maybe Brighton can make them drop points. I feel like that's possible, too. Mm. So, uh, Yeah, and Spurs Villa should be good as well. Yeah, Spurs Villa. That's a, Martin, you, what do you think your chances is Spurs Villa? I think we're going to win because we lost this game. If, if we won this game, we'll probably <laughs> lost the next but because we lost this one, we'll win the next one. <laughs> <laughs> it, depends. it depends if Sound plays. If Sound plays, we can beat them for sure. You know, without Sound, it's difficult because 
when some place, all the other players fall into their uh, natural uh, positions. Although, I, yeah, I mean, I don't like when Angie this, made this one change. Last year, we played more Sarim Bisuma. They, they were protecting defense a little bit more. Now now they, he put Kuluseski there because he tries to, he doesn't want to sit on the bench. Uh, uh, anyone from the five, uh, Madison, Kuluseski, uh, Johnson, uh, uh, <laughs> who else? Solanke and so on. He wants to play like all five, six offensive players. And even if Sam is not there, he wants to keep that kind of uh, philosophy, you know, so he doesn't want to sit any of those players on the bench, which is a mistake because sometimes you have to, sometimes you have to. So you, I, I hope that he'll come back to playing two defensive midfielders like Bisuma and Saar or Bisuma and Betancourt uh, or Saar and Betancourt, whatever, you know, but it's it's just not working if, if there's like, like Lee said, I agree, made, a, made the right comment, the right read. Uh, if we play too many offensive players, it's not going to work. Unless somebody <laughs> plays our hands like a couple of teams did you know but that's on on the other team more than us doing great yeah it's gonna be uh villa's pretty cagey so i i, I feel like i feel like this could be two losses in a row fam nah nah we play at home i don't think you can play lose to them at home yeah we'll see mm -hmm. uh, it's it fun to see martin and lloyd have a conversation about this lloyd had called me when martin came over to watch the el Clasico which we should talk about now if we want to talk about it in Classico. Mm. And uh, you know, they were going at each other a little bit. So it's... Uh, <laughs> Martin goes at, goes at it with everyone. <laughs> yeah, Martin was like... Martin yeah, started really this. Good, like in a good vibe. In a good vibe. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. There's, was, there's, was, there's, not a, there's not a single fan of any club <laughs> out there that Martin could not have an argument with. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, what did you guys think of El Classico? I mean, uh, I actually read a lot about it, and uh, and I listened to some some pundits, and obviously I'm happy because Polish player was the best player on the MVP of the of the game. Uh, he could have had a should have had a hat trick. There's only one Polish player ever that had a hat trick at Santiago Bernabeu. His name is Jan Urban. He played for Osasuna Pampeluna uh, in the '90s, and he scored a hat trick, and they they won it against Real Madrid. Uh, no Polish player ever uh, since then uh, accomplished that. And he should have had a hat trick, but other than that, I'll tell you this, you know, so, so it, it and it plays into what I already said about Chelsea and Lakers and, and menu. Sometimes you need you need to make the right hire. Like Hansi Flick is the right hire for Barcelona. He really made this team team roll. It's exciting. It's there's the right energy about this team. It's just sometimes that's what this is exactly the problem with Manu. It is that not this energy, cohesiveness, the excitement, you know, like they have this excitement. Hansi Flick get them excited. They didn't have it under Xavi last year, like Lewandowski last year, Lewandowski this year. It's 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 a completely different player. And but don't, third... don't forget the year before when he won the league. Xavi won the league. He, he was okay. He was okay. But that's is the by far the best he was ever playing for Barcelona. And because Hansi Flick knows him from, from Germany and knows how to open him up. Uh, knows exactly what type of football you you need to to get Lewandowski going and and all those other kids and pretty amazing you know he changed Rafinha he you know he 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 made he made this team pretty spectacular and it was a it was a pretty spectacular showing on the other hand I talked to some Real Madrid fans that are very unhappy <laughs> with Mbappe so far I think it's premature I think at some point he will start playing better but yeah but that wasn't a very good game from Mbappe that was actually pretty pretty rough game for him. Yeah, I feel like he's not comfortable and he's forgotten that he won a World Cup, multiple League 1 titles and that he's been to a Champions League final. He's been to the World Cup final more than once. And it's like he's he saw Real Madrid win the title without him, the Champions League and the league the year before he got there. So he didn't get there with the feeling that they need me. He got there with the feeling like they really don't need me. And it's like, they're trying, the players are trying to help him. Sometimes they'll give up an open shot on goal to try to get him involved. And he has a respectable amount of games, but you could tell in this game that he was trying to prove himself as supposed to just be Mbappe. And he was offside so many times, it was ridiculous. But we also have to give Barcelona's high line a lot of credit because they showed a stat of how effective it is. It's like Aston Villa last year, like their high line was so effective. And Barcelona is like 
beyond that level. But it's amazing for it to be beyond that level with so many young players to like mm. the discipline. They have veteran discipline for the players that they have in there. And that's what's impressive. And midweek, Barcelona destroyed Bayern. Then they play El Clasico and discard Real Madrid at the Bernabeu. And they're just dropping four goals on teams easily, even the big ones. And it's like, you wanted to know if it was there for real. And they are. And they're for realer than this because they're just getting a lot of injured players back, like Almo. And they just got the young back who played in the second half and just classed the place up. And Lemelia Mal. I don't know what Rafinha this is. This guy. <laughs> this, he played for Leeds, bro. Leeds. He played He's... for Leeds under he played for Leeds under Bielsa. Uh, yeah. That's a crucial <laughs> thing to <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but for them to see like when they bought him, I was like, why would they, you know, I, I guess he's got something, but not Barcelona. And then even if I imagine the, the greatest uh, potential for Rafinha, it wouldn't be this. And this is the type of potential that feels like, oh, it's just growing into it. There's going to be more. Mm. Like they don't, to erase the fact that you're playing next to Lamal, to erase the fact that you're playing next to Lewandowski and every week do something, He's been moved out of his normal position. He's not playing on the right or the left. He, they put him in the middle. Never saw him as a 10. And the fun they're having, the fun. Like, before Martin came over, he came over after the game started. And I said, hey, uh, you didn't see this, but Lamal beat the high line. It was him one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. And it was a shitty shot. And you know when a player knows that they missed a big shot in a big game? They like mm. bang the four floor or like they look upset, like, ah, that hurt. He stuck his tongue out. And I was like, oh, he, he's going to score again. He knows he'll have another chance. That's this dude backs himself to the point where he doesn't get frustrated the way grown men we've seen get frustrated. He's like, all right, we'll do this again. So the, it's just fun for them. It's just fun. I, they, they're having fun. I'm a Real Madrid. I'm watching them beat and batter Real Madrid. I'm having fun. They're just fun, man. Yeah, and one yeah, thing I about mean... Real Madrid, I got a couple of things. Jude Bellingham is not playing well this season either. He's He's been a major, 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 major... Uh, it's not his like... fault, though. Hmm? It's not his fault. Yeah, that's why I'm heading to the next to the next thing. You know, like, uh, a lot of people are speculating that Carlo Ancelotti is a... Is a coach with um, for a time frame that he's he's not like a long term solution. He likes to go win and then move on because in you know two three years uh, he's not producing at the same level and then he goes to another team he makes them win and and then he moves on again because he's like good for two years and and then it's just not working for whatever reason after two three years and uh, Florentino Perez fired him in the past and some people say he might do it again if, if that continues because that's. That's pretty bad look. Uh, the Grand Derby is a Grand Derby. That's the biggest game in football. So, so some people are questioning uh, Ancelotti that you know that he might be expiring as a manager for this team. But I wouldn't go that far. But but I've heard it. You know, people are saying that. Uh, and Lee wants to say something. But before you say, it, I just want to say something. Like, remember the first edition of the Galacticos, where you know. Salt is good. It makes the food taste good. But if you put too much salt in it, it actually ruins <laughs> it, right? Same thing with sugar. And the first Galacticos had too much sugar. You know what I mean? Was that with Beckham and Figo and Zidane yes. and Raul? And yeah. And, and they won the league yeah. and the Champions League before those guys got there and struggled to win as much as everybody thought when they added like Beckham and they just added too much and they got rid of Makaleli. This is the same reiteration that wise as the you added a player, you 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 have Kendrick and you have Mbappe, you added them to a team that won everything last year and it's like it's too much. Then you 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 don't have the midfield to back all this up, and Mbappe is not like a track back type of guy. So 
it, it's you, you do, I think they messed up the formula and they mm. have to remix it, which we knew would be an issue and it is. And they're not playing how we know a team with this quality should play. But I agree with Martin. Mbappe is not going to be Ronaldo and have that first year Ronaldo had. But I do believe eventually he'll figure it out because he is Mbappe and he's technically and he is gifted and they'll be fine. What were you going to say, Lee? I was going to say, um, sort of on that note as well with Mbappe, it's like, I think it will work there, but it will take time for them to optimise how it works because obviously, you know, we've said before we went there that like, you know, Vinny Jr. and him play in a similar way, in a similar position. Um, so, so, you know, how does that work? And how does it look when Rodrigo's in the side? How does it look when, you know, the team is set up a certain way? So, I think they'll 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 figure out those solutions. You know, they're still not doing that badly in the league, so they're not doing that badly in the Champions League. So it's fine. It's fine. Like they'll 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 figure that out, and it's not a huge disaster in in the overall bigger picture. But this game itself was a disaster for them. Yeah. Um, and you know, there's also fine margins on offsides because you know Mbappe did finish two chances in this game, um, but he just couldn't keep himself on side. Was the uh, was was the issue so um you know he's he's got a he's got to figure out how to how to look across that line and 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 check that he's definitely because he's the sort of guy he's so fast he can give himself some exactly. extra space um on the correct side of the line to make sure he's definitely on side because he's going to burn most people in a foot race um but yeah i mean barcelona impressive this you know mark casado has come out of nowhere out of the B team, like he's twenty one. He's not even one of the kid kids. Like he's oh, yeah. twenty one years old. Oh yeah. So it's like he's been just bubbling away in the B team. I think um, I'm not even that sure. Um, and you know, and then he's 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 brought himself through. So yeah, just looking at it, he played sixty one games for the B team. Um, but yeah, he's yeah he came through, and the fact that they were able to bring on Gavi, Olmo, and De Jong off the bench is disgusting. Um, mm-hmm. Just the sort of players you can introduce, and yeah, De Jong had a real impact when he came on, mm-hmm. um, for sure. And just yeah, like Martin said, Lewandowski was was class. Should have had the hat trick. Yeah, he, he could have had four in this game if his finishing was on point. Um, but you know, still two goals in a Clasico, so <laughs> no one's really going to argue. He's probably just disappointed personally for that one. But yeah, and all the way through the team, like um, Inaki Pena in goal, who. Mm-hmm. Wasn't meant to be playing any games this season. He he came up big with a couple of saves, um, <laughs> as well. So just yeah, Martin, big, tell big him performance. What, the, the, Martin has something funny about Martin. Tell him, tell Lee what they're saying about Inaki Pena. Well, not that not since yesterday, but but they were saying that he, he he's not in Poland. As he cannot play, that uh, that he's one of the worst goalkeepers, you know, in Poland media in Poland that Chesna will eat him alive, you know, pretty much. <laughs> Uh, from day one, and uh, and they were saying that he would never agree to sign with Barcelona if he wasn't guaranteed to be number one. Uh, well, that that's not true, you know. Like Peña maybe didn't have too many games uh, so far, but Hansi Hansi Flick, and that's that's also shows you the quality of the coach. He said, "Listen, if he was our number one to start the season, he, there's no reason for him not to be number one." So he's number one, and he proved it. You know, he got this confidence, the support from the coach, the support from. From the manager, and, and he had a, a fantastic game. He stopped and Mbappe several times, and Vinicius Junior in a few other times. Clean sheet, you know. It's nothing, nothing to complain yeah. about. Yeah, he's saying in Poland they're shitting on him, but only because they want Chesney to start. So the <laughs> so it's, it's like there's this there's this anti Pena campaign going on in Poland because <laughs> they want to have a Polish goalkeeper starting for you know one of the biggest teams of all time so it's just hilarious no nah, let Chesney live his life he's out there by the beach smoking cigarettes he's loving life you don't have to do any real work for it yeah <laughs> he might he might win a champions league <laughs> he might just win a free champions league just yeah. and he's still he tanned he's still technically retired <laughs> yeah <laughs> he hasn't come out of retirement yet he just goes in and has has a bunch of kids take shots at him for about an hour every morning then he goes down the beach I'm sure it's a lovely life <laughs> <laughs> you guys want to do fantasy league? Yeah, we can get the fantasy. Um, Does sound Brian, Ave- Brian Avina is still 
still top of the pile. He's he's staying consistent. Mm-hmm. Um, he had a fairly good week. He had like he had Chris Wood in there. He had Harland. He had Mbumo. He had Palmer. That Chris Wood um, man, Chris Wood. Yeah. There's a lot Top of old scoring. forward scoring. Like uh, <laughs> Welbeck scored again. Mm. You know who else is old that's like doing their thing? There's somebody <laughs> else but I can't think of him right now. Even Danny Ings caused so much trouble today. He didn't <laughs> score, but you know, illegitimately, mm. you know. You earned a penalty um, and an accidental assist. Yeah. I mean, I, I did okay this week. Like I had, had at least one of the silver linings from seeing Saints uh, not score was Edison kept a clean sheet for me in goal. Mm-hmm. And I captained Harland. So, you know, it had to be done. <laughs> um, but yeah, I had Palmer. I had Mbumo as well. I had nice. Luis Diaz got the assist for the Liverpool goal. Mm. Um, with that little flick so they, they got me a few points there were some people I was disappointed in there like I thought Watkins was going to get me some points against Bournemouth like come on you're at home to Bournemouth like do something for me um, I put in Buonanotte from Leicester after he tore us apart last week like, he's been playing well for them he did nothing for me against Forest. so mm. I was a little bit disappointed but I got 58 points which is which is okay um, I've stayed 12th I didn't move in the table Martin had an okay week though. He he got sixty eight. He jumped up. He's not above me. Um, he's fifteenth, but it was one of Martin's better weeks. Um, mainly he triple captained Harland though, which I think is a, is a waste. Um, so you oh, wasted that. You wasted that chip, Martin. Because he didn't. He only put you up like a couple of places. I didn't have anything for my triple captain. Scored it all. I got some extra points from him. <laughs> um, but you had Mbumo as well, and Saka, and Palmer, and Smith Rowe got an assist. So yeah, you had a solid. Solid week as well. But yeah, Brian Avina is still top. Ahmad Zekri is uh is keeping keeping pace just about in second place. They've been the one two for a for a few weeks now. So and shout out to Joey Duda, uh long time listener. He is he's up in up in third now. He Joey? had a big week. Yeah, Joey? he played he played his uh his bench boost. He's up in third now. All right. His bench booth, what's that? Uh, it means all the players on your bench points count as well. Usually they don't count if you if they're on your bench. Oh, so oh, so it's an extra way to get points. How many times a season can you once, do that? Once, just at once. Yeah. Oh, okay. all right. So yeah, he played that, and yeah, he had a fairly good week. Like he had Mbumo, and they had Salah. He had Chris Wood as well. He had Vardy who scored, mm. and he had Palmer. So yeah, Joe Joe picked a fairly good week for that. Um, so yeah, he jumped up up to third this week. All right, cool. I guess we can wrap it up, but uh, anything, any guys, anybody want to plug anything? All right. I'll be at the Denver <laughs> Comedy good. Works this weekend, coming up, I think, November 1st and 2nd, with a group of other comics. Zainab's going to be on there, Mike Young, uh, maybe Brett Ernst. I should look at the list. So it's called the, <laughs> the Something Rock Tour. I don't know. <laughs> not, not I don't know, but I, you know, my memory's bad, and I should know. <laughs> So my bad on that. But uh, if you're in Denver, come back. It's going to be it's a, it's a set of dope comics, so it should be funny as shit. Martin, you got anything besides staring off into the light where Tottenham went? No, no. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to also, uh, uh, you know, I, I'm multitasking. I'm watching the Hawks and the Thunder playing right now uh, uh, with, with my right eye. And, and not yet. There are a few, few announcements. I'm going to make them, but not yet. Just follow me on Instagram, I guess, uh, Martin slash Harris away. All right, and follow me on Instagram at Ian Edwards Comic. And what's yours? Uh, Lee Hudson Comedy. Lee Hudson Comedy. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you all for coming through. Uh, fun podcast. It ended with the three losers. And uh, <laughs> shit, man. Hopefully next week it'll be better for us. If you're in Premier League and you're a Premier League fan and your team won, congrats. If you got one point, congrats. And, uh, you know, good luck next week if you're lost. And take care. Be good to each other. One.